How's it going welders on YouTube? So today we're going to look into doublers and how they might be able to help you design something or build something a little bit stronger. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here is a doubler and that is this piece of plate right here. And it's relatively simple. Now what a doubler is supposed to do is that it's supposed to increase the stiffness of <clears throat> the uh, entire piece itself. It'll increase the actual capacity of this portion right here is getting loaded and it will reduce the likelihood of failure under a load. Now, uh, doublers, uh, the company that I worked at, Senior Aerospace SSP, every single piece of pipe we had had a doubler on it. And that was because they were, they underwent a significant amount of vibration because they were in an aircraft. And uh, here is a better look at a doubler and the math to go with it. Now, um, I don't understand the math, more than likely welders won't, maybe hopefully an engineer will, but you know, if you're making, um, if you're using a doubler plate for something like uh, an automotive exhaust to uh, have attachment points or something like that, you don't really have to follow the math to the T, you know, like whatever the thickness of your pipe is, you know, just make sure that your doubler plate is about the same thickness and then you can throw on your attachment points or another pipe or anything to make it a bit more rigid. The only downside to using a doubler is that it's more expensive and it takes more time. But uh, let's uh, see one getting welded. All right, now here goes the welding of a doubler. Uh, this company, uh, I said once before, was Senior Aerospace SSP, that's in Burbank, California. And I'm gonna go ahead and click play. And if you've, um, if you were subscribed to my channel before, it was called uh, Will Weld for Food. You've probably already seen this before, um, but without my commentary. So here we go. Uh, first off, let me address the long stick out. That is strictly so I can um, just get a good view of the camera without having to bend my head all over the place. So for those of you wondering why the long stick out for all of my videos, that's why. So it's easier for you guys to see it. But um, that doesn't really affect what I'm doing, um, the cup that I'm using. And you'll be able to tell just from looking at the piece itself, uh, you know, the Inconel that's being welded is pretty much silver. So it's getting good gas coverage. So there's nothing to worry about there with that long stick out. Now, uh, purge settings. Um, when I was doing this, I forgot how long ago this was, maybe six, seven years ago, um, I had my purge settings maxed out. Uh, I think I had like 60, uh, 60 uh, CFH or something like that because um, I wanted to keep the part as cool as possible while I was welding it. And that's definitely overkill. Um, if you're welding at home, you really just want to have the minimal amount of argon running through that. So, you know, maybe like 10, 15, you know what I mean? Because uh, you're trying to save on gas. But uh, I was working at a billion dollar aerospace company. I didn't care how much gas I was wasting. So just cranked it up. And that's exactly what the person who trained me told me to do because I was pretty new at this. This was like, I think my second welding job. So purge, it varies. You know, you don't want to use a lot of purge on a small item because that can cause suck back. And then you don't want to use too much purge if say you're welding uh, towards the edge of a piece where the argon might blow back out onto your torch. So there's no, you know, set rule for purging, even though somebody might say there is, you know, you just do what works for you at the time based off of whatever it is that you're working on. Now, the type of weld this is at Senior Aerospace, uh, because not all welds are created equal, this is what is known as a Class B weld, and uh, which means it's not being x-rayed. Now, Class B welds will still go through um, liquid penetrant, uh, dye penetrant, I'm sorry, and uh, a visual inspection, and uh, they're gonna take a borescope in there. You don't really need to take a borescope in with this because it's pretty big and you can see inside, but uh, smaller tubes, yeah, they'll stick a borescope in there and definitely check it out thoroughly. And, you know, me or another welder will weld this doubler and it'll stop and it'll get checked before you weld another piece on. So you're not, you know, welding the doubler and the attachment points all at one time. 
every single doubler, every single attachment point has to get inspected individually. And if you make a mistake, part just comes back to you, you fix it really quick, and it's, uh, it's good. I'm gonna just kind of let this play through so you guys can get an idea for how long this took. And just remember, uh, at the time I was welding this, I was an amateur. Yeah, I mean, well, we're all amateurs. We're always learning. It doesn't matter if you have 25 years of experience. If there's something that you haven't seen before, you go right down to being a rookie. But uh, if I were to do this again today, I'd probably weld uh, a lot hotter and a lot faster because the material is relatively thick. If I remember right, it's, I think, 60 thousandths. Um, so, you know, and like, it's not getting x-rayed. You got to add a ton of argon going through that purge. So there was nothing to worry about in terms of overheating the material. But definitely look around, not just at the welding. You know, this, this company was great because of how they ergonomically set up the workstation. You know, everything was within arm's reach. You know, I've met some welders where, you know, they have all the experience in the world, but they'll keep their most common tools at the, you know, at the bottom of their toolbox buried. You know, this place was all about efficiency, you know, having the right tool for the job at arm's length and ready to go. And the, uh, the important thing about welding a doubler is that you do not, I repeat, do not weld it all around. Once you have um, pretty much welded all four sides, you leave a gap um, for air to vent out. Otherwise, you'll have outgassing. So you don't want to actually fill the, the hole in your doubler until your attachment points are done being welded and then the part is completely cooled. After that point, then you can fill in the last little bit on your doubler. Otherwise, it's just gonna pretty much destroy your part. So that is very, very important. Do not completely weld your doubler around. Otherwise, you'll learn the hard way. It'll just and blow your weld right open. And I'm gonna just back it up just a little bit. Uh, let's see. That hole that I was talking about, sorry, but it's, it's gonna be, it's right there. You can just rewind the video if you wanna see it again. And one other thing with the purge is this right here. Try never to have a tube going directly in. If you'll notice this thing right here, that's a uh, piece of copper with um, a copper tube and then um, kind of, I don't know what it is, but something on top of it, you poke holes in it to uh, diffuse the argon going inside so it spreads out nice and even and you don't have it blowing out in a way that you don't want. So that was doublers. Relatively simple, just a piece of uh, sheet metal on top of the tube and it makes it stronger, easy. Just remember, never weld it all the way around, even if you're uh, stick welding one, because um, I've definitely seen them used on I-beams before. You still want to follow the same rules. It'll still outgas. You have to wait until the part completely cools down. Now, what I'm going to leave you with are just a bunch of examples from the same company, Senior Aerospace SSP, so you can see some of their parts and where doublers are used. So, you know, if you're working in automotive or, you know, you're making a new motorcycle or something like that and you want it to be extremely high end or, you know, really resistant to vibration or damage, definitely consider using doublers in your build. But, um, oh, and one more thing too about the, um, the parts that you're going to see. Just remember that if a doubler is welded onto it, the whole part has to get inspected and then the next doubler gets put on. So you might see one, two, three doublers on a part. Uh, more than likely a different welder welded every single one of those. So it's not just one welder uh, sticking with the part the entire way through. Thanks for watching. Peace.